Welcome to Promises Kept Ministry. I am Minister Zebra Augusto, and I will be bringing forth the word today. Now, if you will turn with me to Hebrews 13, 5. And the word of the Lord speaks and says, let your character, your moral essence, your inner nature be free from the love of money, shun greed, be financially ethical, being content with what you have. For he has said, I will never under any circumstances desert you nor give you up, nor leave you without support, nor will I in any degree leave you helpless, nor will I forsake or let you down or relax my hands on you. Assuredly not. Lord God, we just want to thank you for this time. We want to thank you for this day, Father Lord. We want to thank you for this moment, Father Lord God. Let it be you at the center of this word, today and always. Let it be you who is speaking, Father Lord God, here to those under the sound of my voice. Let your heart be known and be felt. Let it be all of you and none of me. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to read that again. And when I read it again, I want you to take it in. I mean, let your soul receive what the word is saying. Again, Hebrews 13, verse 5. And I'm reading it from the Amplified Version. Let your character, you, your moral essence, your inner nature, be free from the love of money. Shun greed. Be financially ethical. Being content with what you have. For he has said, I will never under any circumstances desert you, nor will I give you up, nor leave you without support, nor will I in any degree leave you hopeless, nor will I forsake or let you, or let, oh, nor will I forsake or let you down, or relax my hand on you, assuredly not. So take comfort, I'm going into verse six, and be encouraged, for it confidently says, the Lord is my helper in time of need. I will not be afraid. What will man do to you? Today, I want to talk to you about your character in Jesus Christ, who he is to you and who you are to him. You see, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, it made us his workmanship. It made us his sons and daughters. And life will have you forget that. Your everyday life, circumstances, situations, work, home, relationships, will have you forget that. But I want you to hold on to the second part of Hebrews 13 when he says that he will never leave you nor Will he leave you without support? No, not ever. You see, this is why I chose that song. 
Nothing ever will separate me from the love of God. You'll read in Psalms where the psalmist says, if I make my bed in hell, you will be there. If you make your bed in hell, I'm sure you can take a moment and think of a time, even in your Christian walk, where you really made your bed in hell, so to speak, and you thought, there's no way I can go back to Christ. What I did is unforgivable. What happened can't be undone. You see, these are the things that the enemy tells us. These are the things that he likes to recite. The enemy will never tell you anything good. His doing, his way of living, his way of acting towards us is in hate. He will always contradict the word of the Lord in our lives. He will always tell us opposite to what God tells us. And sometimes in our walk, we just don't understand it. We ask ourselves questions like, Lord, why did you let this happen? Why did you allow this? Not giving ourselves the grace to understand that we're human. We live in an earthly body. We have human intentions. We have a soul. We have a spirit. Yes, we have all these things. But our human nature, that's why in Hebrews 13, he starts with that. Your character, your human nature. And sometimes we forget that. We'll see ourselves as spiritual beings. We'll see our souls. We'll understand our souls. We'll understand the spiritual aspect. But when it comes to our human nature, we tend to forget that we're living in this physical body. So when I chose that song that nothing ever will come between us, that is a biblical fact. And that is something that we need to be reminded of daily. That is something that God reminds us of daily. And if you're in a place in which you don't feel that way, I'm here to remind you that nothing could ever separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter one, and I'm going to start. Let's start at verse 18. And I'm going to be reading this from the Common English Bible. And the word says, this is how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. When Mary, his mother, was engaged to Joseph, Mary became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man. Because he didn't want to humiliate her, he decided to call off the engagement quietly. As he was thinking this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Because the child she carries was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you will call him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Now all of this took place so that when the Lord has spoken through the prophets, it would be fulfilled. Look, 
a virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did just as the angel of, from God commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he didn't have sexual relations with her until she gave birth to a son. Joseph called him Jesus. Now I want you to see that first off, God told Mary what was going to happen before she told Joseph, before Joseph knew. Of course, we all know that. The angel of the Lord came to Mary. Now, in the Bible, Joseph is not mentioned so much as the father of Jesus Christ. Mary, on the other hand, is mentioned continuously. But he also played a big part in Jesus's life because God made him his earthly father. And I like it when it says that Joseph was a righteous man. And because he didn't want to humiliate her, what is humiliation? Shame, finger pointing, gossip. You know, we've all experienced these things in our life. We've all experienced someone saying something about us, even in our walk in Jesus Christ. It's something they don't understand. They don't see us as called. They don't think we can fit the position that the Lord has put us in. They don't understand it. They can't visualize it. They just don't understand. But it says here that the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and told him, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. Take Mary as your wife because the child she carried was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth and he will save his people. That's all it took. Before he didn't understand, before the angel of the Lord came to him and he was ready to divorce her, he didn't understand the vision. He didn't understand why she had conceived and it was the Holy Spirit who did it. So he needed to be reassured. That is God reassuring him. That is God answering his thoughts. Do not be afraid. The child she carries will save his people. And I believe that that is one thing that God is telling us today. You may not understand the call. You may not understand the vision. You may not understand what it is that God is doing in your life. And I'm here to remind you that if he called you to it, he will fulfill it in your life. If he called you to it, he will fulfill it in your life. Jesus' ministry was only about three years. And in those three years, he changed nation after nation after nation after nation. It is because of him that our world is changed. It is because of his mother accepting what the, the, the angel Gabriel told her. It's Joseph accepting what the Lord told him. even when they had questions. And sometimes 
Most times, when God tells us to do something, before we are obedient, we have questions. We want to know the details. We want to know the plan. We want to know the understanding. But just like Mary and Joseph, the two most other important people before Jesus is coming, just like them, we have to be just like them. That is what God is calling us to do. Go without knowing the plan. Go without knowing the details. Go and you will see. People mock Jesus because his father was the carpenter. They didn't think that he was nothing because he came from Nazareth. Because they didn't understand the vision. So what is God telling you to go ahead and go forward in today? What is he telling your spirit? What is he telling your soul? What is he preparing your physical body for? Because sometimes he has to prepare us physically, mentally, and spiritually. All three play a part in our calling. It's not just one or the other. All three. Because we live in this physical body. And just like Hebrews 13, 5 says, that he will never leave you nor forsake you. He's not going to leave you without the plan. He's not going to leave you alone in a deserted place for you to go and figure it out yourself. Everything he does, there's a purpose in it. So what is it that he's telling our souls today? What is he speaking into your life? The Bible says that Jesus, this is Jesus, the man who came and died for all sin, was not accepted in his own hometown. So do not be surprised when those closest to you don't accept the calling over your life. It's okay. It's perfectly fine. That happens so that they can see the Lord in your life. He wants to show them that he is with you and that he is for you. He wants you to be that undeniable testimony in their lives. Because after they see it, they cannot unsee it. After they know, they cannot know. Therefore, they cannot deny. And they'll have to bear witness of God's goodness in your life. It doesn't matter how old, it doesn't matter how young. If he called you to it, I am believing that now, today, not because the new year just started. This is something that he's been working on for months. Some of you years. Now is the moment where God needs your yes. Now is the moment where your obedience will oversee every decision you make from here on out. Your obedience will be shown plain before God. Your obedience to what he, he is telling you to do in your life. It's what a year from now, you're going to look back and you're going to say, won't he do it? And when you're able to say, won't he do it? All these other things, all these unanswered prayers, 
all these things you've been praying for, all these things you've been throwing before his throne of grace, all these things you've been petitioning, all these things you've been telling God you need to do, you need to do, you need to do. All those things are part of his plan. Those desires that you have in your heart, he's placed them there. He's put them there for a reason. Just because he wants you to believe. He wants you to have faith as small as a mustard seed. He wants you to have faith in the unseen. So that when you wake up and you see it, you're like, won't he do it? Because he wants to be an evident God in your life. He wants to be the all-knowing, all-magnificent, all-wonderful, all healing, all signs. He wants to be all in your life. He wants to be it in your life. He wants to be it in everything in our lives. He doesn't want us to leave him out of it. He wants all of our decisions to go through him first. Lord, what should I do in this situation? Lord, what should I do with that? How is it that you want me to take care of my finances? Because when we ask him, we're showing him that we're trusting in him. We're trusting in his love for us. We're trusting that he knows best. We're trusting that he has better for us than what it is that we're witnessing in our lives. That's what he wants. Because when we do that, when we take that step of faith, that's when he's able to move mountains. That's when he's able to remove yokes. That's when he's able to lighten our burdens. That's when he's able to provide all of our needs according to his riches and his glory. If it's one thing I've learned in 2023 is that if you have peace, if you have joy, if you have a sound mind, you have everything you need in Christ Jesus. Why? Because those things cannot be bought. A peace that surpasses all understanding, that you can't go to a store and purchase. A sound mind, that means a mind of Christ over our lives. A sound mind, our mental state is intact. That can't be bought. A doctor cannot give us a, a prescription for it. When we have the joy of the Lord, when you have this joy that's that's beyond anything you can compare because you're holding him in your heart and you're trusting in him and you're giving whatever is going on in your life to him on a daily basis, that cannot be bought. Patience. Patience. Although we wish we could purchase patience, you cannot. Because the patience of God gives you to live life with ease. It gives you a calmness. It gives you a peace. It gives you an everything's going to be okay. These things cannot be purchased. And that is something that God told me in the beginning of 2023. He said, I'm going to give you these things. And these things cannot be purchased. Because we tend to ask God for all of the material things. We want the house. We want the car. 
We want the rich husband. We want the luxury. We want the titles. We want the clothes. We want this. Those things can be purchased. But guess what? They won't last. It does not last as long as having Jesus Christ in your life and having him with all his benefits. And that's something that I'm going to be focusing on is on the benefits of having Jesus Christ in my life. And I encourage you to do the same thing. Don't do it when you only feel that you need him. Don't do it when you're petitioning something before him. I encourage you to do it each and every single day that you live here on earth. You look and you search for the benefits of the Lord in everything that you do. Now, I just spoke about one benefit. And that one benefit that I spoke about today was that he would never leave us nor forsake us. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Wherever you go, he is going to be. That has been a declaration in my life over and over and over again. That no matter how many times I try to run from him, no matter what tree I hid behind, what rock I went under, what dark place I led myself into, he was always there. I know that he will chase me to the highest mountain. I know that he will find me in the darkest hole. I know that I know that I know that he will never leave me nor forsake me. And I'm grateful for that because that's when I know or I'm reminded of his love for me. And he wants to remind you of his love for you. And that everything that you may be facing, are facing, will face. He has it all under control. You have to trust him with that. Trust for some is a big deal. I know it was for me. I learned that I didn't trust him, but I had to learn and I'm still learning. When he tells me, give me that thing. Let go of that relationship. Say goodbye to that place. I'm still learning to trust him on a daily basis. And I'm also learning that it is okay. So with my ending, I ask you, as you go into this week, to really take hold of the benefits of Jesus and being his son or his daughter. Let us pray. Lord, we just want to thank you for this word that came forth. We want to thank you for being at the center of it all. Thank you for every person under the sound of my voice. Thank you for their lives. I pray that you continue to speak words of wisdom, words of encouragement, words that bring life to their lungs, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Now, if you would like to give an offering to Promises Kept Ministry, you can. There are a few ways. You can go to PayPal at Promises Kept Ministry, Cash App at Money Sign Promises Kept Ministry, or Zelle 
at Promises Kept Ministry at yahoo.com. Now let us go into our offering song. One of the best ways that we can prove that we love the Lord is by giving. Amen. So we're going to sing a song about giving, and it's got some hand motions, and I want you to join with me, okay? Will you do that? Here we go. Watch me. Give, and it will come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Give, and it will come back to you. When you give, Give to the Lord. Help me out now. Here we go. Give, and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, and running over. Give, and it will come back to you. When you give, give to the Lord. Give in love, give in faith, give with joy, and a smile on your face. Give as the Lord has given to you. How you give is a reflection of your gratitude. So give, and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, and ride it over. Give, and it will come back to you. When you give, give to the Lord. From your heart, give your best. Give unto God and you will be blessed. Don't be stingy and don't be tight. Learn from the widow in the Bible who gave her last night. So give and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together and ride it over again. And it will come back to you when you give. To the Lord. We are not God, we're in God's hands and offering. And they don't understand why they've been cut off from heavenly blessing. But a hundred life and prosperity begins when you throw your love to God. Shake it together and ride it over again And it will come back to you When you get, get to the Lord But you've got to do it again And it will never come back to you Good measure, press down Shake it together and ride it over again And it will come back to you When you get, get to the Lord Lord, now we just want to thank you. We want to glorify your name. We want to give you all glory and honor, Father Lord God. And as we exit this meeting, Father Lord God, we may exit from one another, but never from your presence, Lord. Let your life be fulfilling to everything that we do. Let your love endure and be known in our lives, Lord God, as we bear witness to those who don't know you on a daily basis. 
may we shine bright as the sun and may your name be glorified to all. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen.